I'm Fred Lindgren and you're watching Talking Dirt. So who's in your team? Well, on the mechanical side, we have uh, Dave Haynes and Jonathan Burks, uh, really good, easy going guys from England and uh, we have really good communication uh, in between the races and in between uh, their races. And uh, behind the scenes, obviously, my wife and manager, Carolina Jonas' daughter, uh, she's uh, taking care of, of all of us and all the, all the boring stuff behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> How's it now, dude? Like, from when you first started out traveling like, to the UK and stuff, and now having like, two mechanics and a big van set up, life easier? It's different, for sure. Uh, you know, when I first started to race in the UK as a young man, uh, I lived at a family family place, the Harvey family, and uh, you know Mark. He used to help me uh, at the track, uh, but most of the times I used to do my own bikes in between the, in between the races, and uh, um, it worked as well. And I didn't I didn't race maybe as much as, much as I do now, so hey, yeah, it worked. Now, like with having these boys, you can concentrate just on the racing and not having to worry about the driving and the long hours of doing the no, bikes and stuff? No, I think if I, if I had to do everything myself, like driving and mechanicing and wash bikes and everything myself, I, I wouldn't have lasted this long, I think. It's a lot of work to, to do by yourself, so... And now I have these boys prep everything for me. I can focus on the racing, I can uh, focus on my training, and I normally fly. Uh, when I can, I fly to the places I need to go uh, to be as as uh, relaxed as possible so um, yeah it's, uh, it's the way for me now i remember back in the day like when tony and crumpy were in the series they'd have like gp bikes that they would only have for the gps these are your bikes that you're racing in the leagues as well no because I, I i don't think they did have gp bikes but i, I don't know a rumor that i heard a rumor yeah that's the rumor people hear about me too but uh, these are the exact same bikes that are racing in the polish league now in the swedish league mm -hmm. uh, and gp it's the same bikes basically My plan for, for this year was to only race in, in the Polish League and, and the Grand Prix Series. But uh, uh, I made a decision just to recently to sign for a Swedish club. Uh, so get a few more uh, meetings and uh, that also means we have to travel a lot more. So the, the boys uh, came here to Prague from Sweden. We did the individual Swedish Championship on the Tuesday. And how did you do in Sweden in the Championship? In the Swedish Championship, uh, I came back and was the king of Sweden. I got, I got the win. I'm not going to see my family much over the next, next couple of uh, months, I reckon. So uh, back to speedway life. How much does your wife and baby get to come to the racing? Just at Chesterhover? Or? No, my baby, she, she still ha has not been to a race yet. Uh, the ones we had in Chesterhover were so late. They started like 8.30. So... So Carolina stayed in, in home with uh, with Millie Lee, the the baby. So she hasn't really she hasn't been to a race yet. How was that? Um, you know, going into the World Championship last two rounds last year, finding out that your wife was going into labour on the day of, yeah, you know, I think it was the Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a weird situation. You know, I was chasing the world title. Uh, I was really focused on that and uh, at the same time my wife going in to, to give birth to a, a baby daughter and uh, she just sent me the photo on uh, I think it was in the morning on the Friday on the race day and uh, I kind of just had to look at the phone look at the picture and you know be happy for a short time but then straight away focus on the race so it was uh, it was a difficult situation not only for me more probably for my wife. Yeah, she had to do everything by herself, so she, uh, she's a strong girl.
first uh, Grand Prix of the season, first seat, I got excluded. That was uh, pretty tough. Uh, first of all, not to get the points, but also not to have a feel for the track in, in race mode as well. So, And then it was kind of a long break for my second run, so uh, I kind of had to dig deep in my mental strength to, to be ready. But I, I got there, I got the points to get to the semis, got into the final and uh, worked really hard to, to make that happen. And then in the final, I touched the tape and I was like, damn. Damn, but uh, it's history and it happens. Yeah, it could, it could have been worse, could have been better. That's how I see it. What's the plan? What's the plan? I catch up with Slim. Look at them. them sick motherfucking the helmets. Oh, yeah. You. This is where the magic happens, eh? Yeah. How many helmets you done this year, Slim? 74 so far. 74. Yeah. I can make from this, I can make 40,000 40, shades of uh, colors. If somebody comes here and he says, I have uh, 1985 Ferrari, blah, blah, uh, I go to the, to the system uh -huh. and I mix it. I mix it right on point. <laughs> 40,000 shades. I used to do a lot of uh, a lot of stuff for local racing, but uh, now business is doing good and and I paint worldwide and not too many people show up lately, not too many riders because only UPS guy, and I I pack the helmet and give it to the UPS guy. But no more no more visits. <laughs> so it's nice to have someone like Ty turn up. Oh yeah, man! I'm stoked. I'm stoked to have him here, man. The fans decided that yeah. I need to run the helmet like this. I put really? on Instagram, like, what do you, do you want to see yeah. it next year? Yes or no? And Showy, what did they say? Showy is stoked, man. Yeah. We've got two of them, so I'm using one and we're going to give another one away in a competition. Perfect. Skate Slim? A little bit, with my son. I haven't been on a and skateboard in years. Just make sure you only put the good one in. That my scooter slim. My, yeah. my dad and his friend got two Lambrettas, 1960s maybe. Can't remember the exact date, but I'm pretty sure they're 1960s. That was completely fucked. Like they was rotten. No, fuck. all the paint was all like flaking off. They shipped them. They went on holiday to England. They bought them, shipped them back to Australia. They fully renovated them. And then when my dad died, my mum sold everything in Australia and she sold the scooter. And then like four or five, maybe six, six years later, I went back to Australia and I was like, I wish I bought that scooter, you know, I wish I'd like kept it. So I put on Facebook, I did a big post, you know, explained that my dad got cancer and, you know, we wasn't in a position to keep it. And now I want to buy it back. And within 24 hours, I found the guy. Really? And I bought the scooter off him. Nice. So I got it back. And then a couple of years ago when I went back, his best friend, his kids started riding Speedway. And uh, I took some bikes out, did a little bit of racing, and he was like, oh, like I want to buy a bike off you, like I'm going to sell my scooter. And I was like, F these scooters like came together. It was my dad and his best friend. They renovated them. And I was like, just give me the scooter and like a little bit of cash and take the bike. And if you want to buy it back in like 10, 15 years, I'll keep it there. So I've got both the scooters, you know. Both lumber. Lambretas. Both Lambretas, yeah. And both fully restored. Right. What year? I think they're 60s. I don't know the exact year, but they're 1960s. Yeah. This one's 1980. Mm. PX 125. But they're cool as f***, man. Yeah. But to get my dad's back, I, I didn't think I was going to get it back. 24 hours on Facebook. That's so awesome. Crazy. Man. Two kids. Be fun. Ready? Bite it. No, ready? Open. Ready? Open. Yeah. Slap down a cotter hay. Yeah. See here. No more.
Cheese. Bye. Who's the boys in your team and uh, what's their roles? Um, Jacko is my marketing manager. Conjo's chief mechanic. And then we've got Greshek and uh, Mihal, who are just full gas. The boys are always full gas, getting done. Like tonight, they've got to stay here and prep all the bikes in the morning. So they'll probably leave here at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning and finish them off when they wake up before we start. We will hold up the meeting at the moment because the rain is too heavy. After my last race, you could see it's unrideable. Bernstrom pulled up, I took my goggles off. Pulled four tear offs, ran out of tear offs, used my hand, then I couldn't see anything. Never throw my goggles in my life, but um, yeah, had to today. And uh, you know, there's all the people sat in the stands, it hasn't stopped raining for the last half an hour, the track's f***ed. And I just don't know why we're all f***ing sat here waiting. Now I'm just catching up with some WhatsApps. Got anyone good on the WhatsApps? Uh, the bosses text me to when it gets rained off, come home so we can have Chinese and watch Love Island. <laughs> so we'll be doing that when this gets cancelled. I've still got heaps of WhatsApps from yesterday because when you do half decent, everyone wants the texture. And then when you ask, no one WhatsApps you. So the joys of sport. Everyone wants to know you when you're winning. Come on, boys, let's race. Two minutes! Two minutes! <laughs> Doily and Max's eyes lit up when I shouted that. <laughs> what do you reckon, Raph? We should race? Would you race? Yeah, f of course. Everyone that finishes the career says they'd race in it. <laughs> It needs to be four rounds, yeah? It's, yeah, we need to do five more heats because there's one more heat in this block and then the next four heats. If they run it tomorrow, do you have to go from heat one again? Yeah. Start from scratch. That doesn't matter. Just another f***ing GP to start. How do you feel about that, Matthew? Uh, be honest. Re re Result-wise, good. Because I screwed up many points today. <laughs> <laughs> Result wise. <laughs> Gee, man, I was so out of shape. Yeah. You saw how you passed me. Oh, yeah, in that fucking in the corner. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, it. That was me. It wasn't Junior, it was me. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, you thought maybe. <laughs> I just came in like a meter wider, yeah, 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 and then ooh. I saw you go, Wah! and I was like, oh, cheers, Manny. Yeah. Yeah. Stage the meeting from Heat 1 tomorrow at 1 p.m. So I will send out an email and I'll WhatsApp to the riders all the schedule for tomorrow. But unfortunately the rain has beaten us tonight, so uh, we'll start again tomorrow at 1 p.m. So, not the weekend you was after? Ah, 
Friday was alright. We struggled all night and then uh, made it to the semis and then made it to the final and stood on the podium. So, but uh, yeah, not up to speed at all. Uh, it's been tough having some time off with the injury. You know, I had a month off when everyone else was racing, but uh, no excuses. We need to find some more speed and um, win some more races. Weekend. Yeah, it was a tough one. Obviously, yesterday was uh, difficult, and uh, you're going to have somebody behind you trying to cause mischief, Mr. Woofenden. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah it's a tough weekend, and obviously, yesterday we tried our best to get to where we needed to, but unfortunately, yeah. See, I'm trying to be professional, and these riders come and mess it up. Uh, no, it, it was, uh, he's gone now. Yeah, difficulty with the weather. You know, the riders respect to them for going. And I know it heat 11 when they were actually at, at the start tapes. I was considering calling it back then. So it came down really heavy. So I think I wouldn't have sent the riders out in that kind of condition. And, and it didn't really stop for another hour. So we had no option here. But today, as you've seen, it was a tough day to get the track to where it needed to be before the start. We worked really hard all morning and then we got it and we had a marvelous final, which was good for the crowd. And hopefully they go away with a good, uh, good, good meet and feel. How was your weekend? It's been really hard work, you know. Uh, uh, first Friday, uh, battle all the way, got to the final. Yesterday was a uh, wet one, we did three races, got cancelled, had to start over today, a regroup. And uh, I felt uh, this morning when I woke up, you know, my body was very tired. My arm, I had some arm pump last night, the last heat, and still recovering from that. So today was uh, just a I rode with a lot of heart and was battling all the way and we never really got the bike working working good. We, we struggled a bit for speed and uh, I think today to make it to the podium was was a big effort. Uh, I rode my skin out, skin, <laughs> out of my skin. Yeah. How was your weekend, dude? Could be better, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> really? Only by one yeah, place? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, to be honest, uh, that was a great weekend. Um, team was working you know, great. And uh, today, uh, like on Sunday, was was pretty tough for me, but we finished uh, very good, and uh, I, I'm very happy what we get. Uh, good points. Track is beautiful city. Today we have beautiful day, so um, I'm very happy. Leading the world championship too. Thanks, man. I Yay! hope I can say three and. <laughs>